Hello and welcome back to The Note. We've had a relatively quiet start to the week on the markets. US stocks down a little. Perhaps rather intriguingly, both oil and the dollar weaken together. That doesn't happen often and it bears some watching. For now, I'd like to take a look at two numbers that perhaps cast a little more detail on where the market has reached. First of all, if we take a look at this first chart, we received the Fed's Labour Market Conditions Index today. This is an index of labour market uh, numbers involving 19 separate measures mixed together with the Fed's own special source. As you can see, it's still in rather negative territory, suggesting that things are looking quite bad for the labour market. And if you compare it to the uh, Bloomberg Financial Conditions Index there, this is a chart suggested to me by ITG, for which many thanks, you can see that there's a very close uh, correlation between them. Financial conditions have tightened noticeably since the Fed finally decided to uh, taper off QE and then to start talk about raising rates. And that has translated or helped translate into much tighter labor market conditions. Therefore, it makes it that much harder for the Fed to talk about raising rates as part of its mandate is to keep uh, uh, full employment. That would help to explain why Janet Yellen, who is known to put a lot of weight on uh, this particular indicator, is trying to talk more dovishly about the possibility of further rate rises. Now, another interesting set of data we got today was from the various investment banks and research organizations who track performance by money managers. And it turns out that the first quarter was biblically terrible for active managers trying to beat their index. According to uh, uh, B of A, Merrill Lynch, uh, it was the worst quarter since they stopped, started uh, keeping counts in the early 1990s. Less than 10% of large cap growth managers managed to beat their benchmark. Extraordinarily poor, poor performance. There are many reasons behind it. I'd like to focus on just one for now. If we take a look at this chart, uh, it compares the S&P 500 high beta index. Beta is the term, a beta, high beta stock is a stock that is very sensitive to moves in the market. It will go up by more than the market when the market is up and down by more than the market when the market is down. Now, it's a very common strategy by managers who uh, are facing the end of the year and seem to be behind for the year to pile into high beta stocks. That way, if the market does go up for a while, that might take them back into positive territory for the year. It would appear that quite a lot of people tried playing that game at the end of last year, even though high beta had been doing very badly for most of last year anyway. And as you can see, anybody who did try that trick uh, suffered woefully at the beginning of this year. Beta suffered a really dreadful reverse uh, at, as the, uh, the year started. A lot of uh, very previously high-flying stocks fell very rapidly. And many of those managers subsequently got out of their high beta stocks just in time for the rebound to start in February. There are other reasons behind the uh, performance of active managers, and I'll be writing more about that as the week goes on. But that's certainly one part of the problem. Uh, the classic trick of loading up on high beta, going on a beta hunt at the end of the year, really rebounded very badly this time.